Welcome back to the Success in Trucking podcast, powered by ES. Hello again, everybody. I'm Greg Thompson, and in this edition of the podcast, we'll be bringing you part two of our conversation with Leah Shaver. As we shared with you in part one of our interview with Leah, she is the president and CEO of the National Transportation Institute, and she is well-respected within the trucking industry as a go-to resource for her market analysis on issues impacting the quality of life for professional drivers. Leah also serves as a host on Sirius XM's Road Dog Trucking Radio Channel channel 146. Our interview with Leah is part of a special series that we are presenting as we count down to the Expedite Expo. Of course, as we've shared with you in previous episodes of this series, the 2023 edition of the Expedite Expo will take place in Fort Wayne, Indiana on July 21st and July 22nd. Once again this year, ES will be serving as the presenting sponsor of the Expedite Expo. And ES will also be hosting the company's annual Insight Dinner at the Expo on Friday, July 21st. Following our interview with Leah, you can hear details on how you can register for the Expedite Expo and the Insight Dinner at the Expo. Right now, we're ready to take you to part two of our interview with Leah Shaver, the president and CEO of the National Transportation Institute. Leah, it's great to have you back on the podcast to continue our series ahead of the Expedite Expo. And in part one of our interview, you told us that you'll be speaking at the Insight Dinner at the Expo. And we mentioned it in the opening. That's Friday, July 21st. And as we also shared in part one of our interview, you're one of these folks who's plugged into every facet of our industry. Major companies look to your company, the National Transportation Institute, to get the latest on the trends that are happening within the industry. So as we jump into part two of our interview, I'm wondering when you're speaking to the folks at the Insight Dinner, are you going to be talking about what's happening in 2023? And the reason I'm asking this is that I'm curious on how you see 2023 in terms of what's happening in the industry. I haven't written out my speech yet. Still have a little bit of time, but right now, if you ask me the night before, I would first of all share with you that I anticipate there are a lot of folks that are already operating as professional truck drivers in the industry or operating businesses that work with truck drivers or support them, etc. And so one of the privileges that I do have in the industry is being able to thank folks that are doing everything they can to not only keep our country equipped with goods, right? Including me and my family. Everything that we have, need, enjoy on a daily basis is delivered by a professional driver. So I think first and foremost, I will probably be offering my gratitude, touching on why that's so important. So to that, I am an expert in market trends that impact the folks that we do business with, the folks that are looking to contract with professional drivers that want to get into the industry or want to become owner operators. One of the things that really does impact them is, of course, the COVID economy and what's happened over the last few years, the push and just great demand that the country has had for a number of different industries, especially the trucking industry. We are currently just starting to feel the impacts of entering into a mild recession. So that changes how folks approach the market, how they approach their hiring or growing needs what's happening in the last three years impacting equipment and just supply of goods overall. All of these things really have a great impact, not only on fleets, but also on professional drivers, whether they own their truck or not. So I will probably share some aspects of the labor market, which while unemployment is at a record low, the economy is also slightly struggling. And typically when we see dips in the economy, we see unemployment kind of come off of those lows and we're not seeing that. The other thing that we have in addition to a lopsided employment status in terms of folks that could potentially be working is we just see our labor supply overall depleted when it comes to what we refer to as industrial workers. So that would include labor shortages in trucking and in warehousing. Why does that matter? Because it really impacts how folks and whether or not they're going to be entering the industry. And as we see exits with age on the back end, as we see demand softening a bit, 
We tend to see more folks circulating in the industry looking for the right spot. So it's just been a little bit of a wonky time. And I would imagine that I will absolutely touch on some of those trends so that folks know just why they are so valued, why their role is so important, and then some other things to look out for. I know that one of the things that you get a chance to do, and you mentioned it earlier, is that that ability to thank people in person, that ability to do the outreach. You've mentioned this to me before, that one of the things that you really enjoy doing with your SiriusXM gig is being able to talk with drivers right on the ground, take those phone calls, get their perspective. Can you talk about that a little bit, about how events like the Expo opportunities to host SiriusXM and talk with drivers keeps you plugged in on a ground floor? Well, I think, as I mentioned before, my career entry into the industry was attracting folks to a particular company. It was wanting to make sure that folks found the job and the industry attractive. And I think that's still true today. Just 100,000 times the size and amount and effort that I had back in 2001, a very long time ago. But that said, On behalf of ES, who I've worked with now for several years, especially in the last three years, I'm telling you, we've been doing these virtual events and you're able to introduce folks personally to know here are the stakeholders at ES. Here are the folks that lean on ES. Here are members of the community of ES. Here are all of them together personally being introduced to you right in the privacy of your home, the cab of your truck, whatever it is, right? to understand what their priorities are and how they can be of service to you because that's how that company approaches their place in the industry. Now, I said I approach it from a place of gratitude. ES would say they're going to approach it from a place of service. I think that's a fair statement. I see the Expedite Expo, the dinner the night before, I see these as opportunities to literally, as you said, do this in person, to introduce folks personally to the priorities of the organization, to introduce drivers that are looking for specific things and what their preferences are, to what the opportunities are that ES can help support them. So I do see the value in that in-person introduction in establishing relationships from a place of gratitude, from a place of service. I think those are great overlaps of our two companies and how we can really celebrate professional drivers at a live event. Well, now I know that your position in the industry has afforded you some pretty cool opportunities. And recently, you've had a chance to do some podcast hosting as well as your SiriusXM pieces and the webinar hosting you've done for ES. And I know recently you got to do a podcast with somebody pretty high up in the overall structure of the industry. I want to give you an opportunity to talk about that. And as we're talking with an audience of professional drivers, what that experience was like for you and where people can access this content because I think it was a great conversation. It's something that I think anybody's involved in this industry should take a look at. Thank you for the recognition. As you know, I told you afterward, you said I did a good job and I took that as really positive because you have a lot more experience in this area than I do. I do have the privilege of backing up the host of a podcast called Taking the Higher Road. This is a program that's put out by Freight Waves. So the podcast is called Taking the Higher Road. And I interviewed the administrator of the FMCSA, Robin Hutchison, who, by the way, I don't remember if I mentioned this to you, or maybe I did. I lived in Minnesota for 20 years. She also did some time in Minnesota. In fact, I think her job before FMCSA was in Minnesota. And she shared with me that she's going to be moving back there. So you work in D.C., but you can live anywhere, right? And once you've been to Minnesota, you feel like you got to come back. I guess it stays with you. I don't know if I had that experience, but I mean, I guess it does stay with me because I married a Minnesotan and now I've birthed a child that has to be brought back every once in a while. But in any event, Robin Hutchison, she made quite an impression on me. And I also shared my interview with my social media followers. It's at Leah Shaver Sirius XM if you want to get connected with me. But I shared my interview with them and they also thought I did a pretty bang up job. So I was pretty proud of that because I think in general, you know me well, Greg, and I'm not a government gal. I'm here for the people. But I guess to that, that is also the way Administrator Hutchison sees her role and sees the FMCSA, that they are here to support drivers. And I don't think that that's a position we've heard a lot from that office in past. 
again, I don't want to make any blanket statements, but I don't know a whole lot of positive from a driver perspective about the FMCS. Right. If you look at the last 20 years when you've got hours of service and all these things, it's kind of like the only time that drivers have talked to the FMCSA has been at listening sessions and that type of thing. So they are regulators, but that's what I liked about your interview was the fact that here's somebody, you could see that she has a passion for the job and she wants to understand the issues and she cares about people. She does. She really does. And I felt that was genuine. And by the way, you started this discussion talking about my impressions of the folks at ES and how I feel about their genuine interest to be of service to professional folks in the industry. And I did genuinely get that impression from Administrator Hutchison that she cares about what drivers want today, what tomorrow's drivers are going to want she cares about the important conversations, even if they're difficult. And that came up in our interview. Remember, I'm a recruiting and retention gal and trucking is all I know. And so since the podcast is about recruiting and retention, what I see is one of the greatest challenges in the industry. That's where my questions were stemmed from to her. So I asked her about the overlap in recruiting and how she got into her role meaning that generally speaking trucking is a second third fourth career for folks they don't typically start here like i did so it was interesting how the out of route way that she landed <laughs> in her role and then what are the opportunities that's available in terms of again our drivers today but also what folks are going to want tomorrow because that's changing a little geeky bit here but the largest cohort of folks working today in north america are millennials the largest cohort of drivers are Gen X. That's my generation. And we have a very significant population of boomers, which are aging and retiring and wearing out of the industry. And so we do need to think about tomorrow. It doesn't necessarily all get put into place today, but it has to be considered because we're a generation off from the rest of the country in terms of who they have available to fill their seat. And then I thought it was really important to understand what are her priorities, what are the initiatives that she's working on at the FMCSA? How is she leading them in to do what work? And that's where some of the stuff can be a bit challenging. Making trucking safe for all workers, including women, and in a variety of different ways. They just launched some studies on leasing. They're launching studies on the alignment of safety and compensation for drivers. Of course, I had to talk about that because that's my jam here at NTI is how folks are paid. And certainly in our work, sometimes it comes up of how a company can pay and whether or not that does incent the right activities for those drivers. We want them to be motivated to make the right decisions all the time. And most importantly, as you know, to be in a place that people want to join and more importantly, that they want to stay. We talked a lot about not only safety issues, but all of the issues combined that can impact a professional truck driver. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds a lot like a conversation that I would have on a daily basis and not so much that the FMCSA yeah. administrator would have on a daily basis. So I was pretty proud of the outcome and proud of the conversation and she left smiling. So I think it went well. It did. And again, I know you guys have got it on your website. Remind us where we can access that interview. Yeah, you can get it. My website is driverwages.com, but it's on Freight Waves and they've got a link for podcasts. And then if you just look in any phone, you've got Apple, Android, look in podcasts and check out Taking the Higher Road. And you'll see a variety of interviews that we've done, including this recent one with Administrator Hutchison. Very cool. Well, in our remaining moments, you mentioned it earlier, in addition to doing all the things you do, running company, being extremely plugged into this industry, you're a mom of a young man who just turned one years old. So tell us about the past year and tell us a little bit about your little guy and his birthday party. Well, I will say you make me tired just thinking when you list off all of the responsibilities I have. The last year, I've been really tired. <laughs> I guess that's normal for the first year parents. For those of you that are kind enough to listen, I am 44 years old. I have a baby that just turned one. So obviously, it's a bit 
big surprise for me and my husband when we were told that I was pregnant, in which case I disputed wholeheartedly. There was no way. But my son was born a year ago. He just turned one. He looks just like me. So he's obviously a stunner. He's very smart. He understands multiple languages and he's doing amazing things. But most of all, he seems really happy other than having to go to bed, having to get a diaper changed, all the things that a kid has to do. He doesn't really like to do any of those things, but he seems really, really happy. That makes me feel like in addition to the responsibilities that I have to the trucking industry that I'm doing a pretty half decent job as his mom. He's very much into reading. Of course, he's got trucks everywhere. In fact, my parents just bought him for his first birthday, a model truck. You know, those trucks that we used to get from our fleets that we worked for. Yeah. You know, they got my son a die cast truck and it says Malachi Trucking Inc. or something All right. like that. Very cute, very unique, and not a gift I would have expected, but what a lovely surprise. So anyway, he's got a lot of support from the industry. We exploit him mercilessly in terms of <laughs> promoting to our customers the next generation, because of course, I am going to auction his skills off to the highest bidder when he turns 18 in hope that he will find great employment in the trucking industry and do what all of my listeners are doing, which is safely deliver goods across North America. So he's doing really well. I'm starting to get a little bit more rest and I still remain quite tired, but it's been a really fun, exciting year to watch him grow. And honestly, to watch me grow as a mom, as a business owner, as a leader in what I have to believe is the oldest working mother, someone <laughs> in my role in the industry. I have not found a peer that's a new mom. I know a lot of grandmas. I know a lot of grandmas, but not a lot of moms my age. But in any event, it's been very exciting. And thank you for celebrating his birthday. And of course, my status as a new mom, something that I think anyone can probably appreciate because whether it was recently or more likely many years ago, they probably very distinctively remember remember those days of no sleep. Oh yeah, been a long time for me, but I do remember that. Well, you have beamed throughout this interview with energy and excitement. The last few minutes here talking about Kai, what I so appreciate about you is that you're so passionate about what you're doing. I'm really looking forward to being with you in person at the Expedite Expo and any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience. I hope to see you in person in Fort Wayne. Most importantly, I would say that registration is free at expeditexpo.com. The dinner that's being hosted by ES is free, but it is limited in size. And so you do have to register ahead of time and you can do that at successintrucking.com. There's also links from expeditexpo.com to the ES website to be able to register for that dinner. But we'd love to see you in person at the dinner, at the expo, at both. I hope you find me. I'll be wearing the We Heart Truckers t-shirt and make sure that everyone knows just how grateful we are. But I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And in the meantime, I hope that you all stay safe and well. Most importantly, that you know you never stand alone with ES. That's part two of our interview with Leah Shaver, the president and CEO of the National Transportation Institute. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank Leah for her time and perspective. Now, folks, at the opening of the podcast, we told you about the Expedite Expo and the Insight Dinner at the Expo coming up in July. The Expedite Expo will be held on July 21st and July 22nd in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The Insight Dinner at the Expo will take place on Friday, July 21st. Now, if you're interested in joining ES at the Expedite Expo and being a part of the Insight Dinner at the Expo, we'd like to invite you to visit the front page of the company's website, essuccessintrucking.com. From the front page of essuccessintrucking.com, you'll be able to access the Events tab. And once you're on the events page for the Insight Dinner at the Expo, you'll see the information on how you can register for the dinner. ES also has a link in this section of the website to register for the Expedite Expo. And as always, you can register for the Expedite Expo by visiting the following website, expeditexpo.com. That's expeditexpo.com. While both the Expedite Expo and the Insight Dinner are free events, the Expo and the Insight Dinner do require a registration. 
Now, if you're listening to us on Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart, or Google Podcasts, we'd like to invite you to subscribe to the Success in Trucking Podcast. Once you become a subscriber, you'll be notified whenever we post a new episode. And finally, folks, thanks for spending part of your day with us here on the Success in Trucking Podcast, powered by ES.